Hi YouTubers, it's Micah Pilcher again. Today we're going to be talking about Dr. Hugh Ross. It's going to be an expose of his errors, both biblical and scientific. I have to start off, first of all, by saying this is not an ad hominem attack against Mr. Ross, Dr. Ross. Because at the end of the day, whether he's a good person or not, really doesn't bear anything as to whether or not the earth is old or whether it's young. However, this man is doing a lot of damage to the kingdom. And his scholarship is dubious. His science is way off base. His attitude is unapproachable. And for that reason, I'm doing this expose as a warning to those who have heard of him but are inclined to fall under his teaching. The information I've got is mostly from the Answers in Genesis website. I'm going to link two of their articles uh, to the description, and I advise you to read them. They're extremely long and in much more detail than I'm able to do in a short YouTube video, so I advise that you look into them and, and get the information uh, straight from the horse's mouth. Every single one of their quotes are sorts. First of all, his, his blatant mischaracterization of the young earthers and the young earth position. that He tries to give the impression, as would Richard Dawkins and many out-and-out -out atheists or, or, or um, Bill Nye Science Guy, is that we are against science. On the contrary, we are for Jesus, we are for the Bible, and it's for its actual interpretation. Uh, we are for an, an objective standard, an ultimate standard of truth by which you can even know how to do your science. See, science is nothing but the observations of man, but man is inherently flawed. Man is uh, full of human error. Not just sin, but just general human error. Understand something. The Bible never ever requires that we turn in our brain at the door of a church, but it does ask us to remember that our brain is smaller than God's. And for what it's worth, when I was in high school, I used to be a hopeless science geek. The unsaid part of this is that the secular world and the scientific world are in complete unanimity in their conclusion of an old earth. This is not at all the case. There is a huge underworld, if you will, of scientists out there of every possible religious affiliation, and many of them even agnostic, who are saying, the evidence we're looking at does not line up with the theory we were taught in school. The earth appears to be much younger than what we were told, and evolution is not scientifically possible. Hugh Ross has a long and deplorable history of gaffes of saying things that are absolutely not true and that even many in the old earth communities do not agree, agree with him with and cannot verify. Um, I'm going to read to you a partial list from one of the articles I'm going to post. It says, first of all, on a number of occasions, Ross has stated that DNA is either made of proteins or itself is a protein. This is not true. This error first appeared in the first edition of Fingerprint of God but was corrected in the second edition. Ross has completely botched the story of the peppered moths in England. He called them butterflies, uh, and he said that they were green. The later gaffe was apparently because he misunderstands the natures of the moths' alleged evolutionary advantage, thinking that the moths were supposed to be found on foliage rather than on tree trunks. Ross also said that the average human eyesight is three times better than it was 2,000 years ago. And this is an example, the author says, of an absurd and unfounded claim made entirely without documentation. Ross also claimed that the Pacific Ocean Basin is the scar left from, which the, from when the moon formed uh, by separation from the Earth. Uh, that is a very old idea, but it was discarded decades ago, even by the generic scientific community, the, the old Earthers at large. A few years ago, Hugh Ross and Dwayne Gish, this is my favorite, uh, were guests on the James Dobson's popular radio program, Focus on the Family. During the discussion, the question of star formation came up, and Gish questioned the possibility and obser observations of star formations today. In his response, Ross blithely stated that, quote, We see a star formation in real time. You can take a pair of binoculars out tonight and watch. It's actually happening, unquote. That is a blatantly false statement that no other astronomer would endorse. Now, most of Hugh Ross's gaffes have come while he was running his mouth, uh, because obviously a book is going to be far more edited. However, even his books have a lot of mistakes in them, For some of them, for instance. He claimed that the Scopes trial was in 1927, not correctly in 1925. He also claimed that current that the current 71 to 29 percent ratio of water to land surface on the Earth has been theoretically and ob observationally demonstrated to provide the maximum possible diversity and complexity of life. No reference was given for this statement, so it is impossible to determine where Ross discovered this quote unquote fact, or if indeed he correctly handled it as well. In the same book, Ross writes that. Theory and observations both confirm that all planets start with opaque atmospheres. Again, no references are given. But short of directly observing the birth and development of a large number of planets, how could this be observationally tested? To some, these may seem like petty objections, but these sort of misrepresentations are common in Ross's works. And now I'm going to cut to the chase with 
what for me is the very much the bottom line. He claims that nature is like the 67th book of the Bible. And he said this more than once. It's one of his favorite sayings, apparently. I hope it's obvious to a person who has an eye to see and an ear to hear that that is a minor form of blasphemy. The Bible offers a lot of warning against those who tamper with the Word of God, who add to it or take away from it. And it also offers strong warning and condemnation to those who worship the creature rather than the Creator. Yes, we do know God created the universe, and we do know that the heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth His handiwork. However, that being said, the testimony of nature is by no means anywhere near the infallible testimony of the Word of God. In fact, man was given dominion over nature, so in fact, not only is nature not on par with the Bible, but it's actually two steps below. Christians who take a older position usually cannot deal with this because they need to assume that nature is on par with science, which is not even a, a, a valid idea in of itself, but they want to assume that nature equals science and that science must equal Bible, that it, science must be on par with scripture. That is not true, and it is this fundamentally flawed assumption that leads eventually to the old earth idea and many other heresies. Ironically, even though Hugh Ross very, very oftentimes tries to discredit his opposition by arguing that they themselves don't have the credentials to discuss any number of different issues, he himself has no training in the Hebrew, and yet he is oftentimes leading his disciples astray in their interpretation of the word yom and so many other passages which uh, prove emphatically from the scripture that the earth is young and that the flood was global. One of the key aspects of Dr. Ross's personality is his his, his un unapproachability. He is very, very proud. He comes across that way when he is approached about his gaffes, his scientific inaccuracies, his mishandling of both scriptural uh, scripture information and scientific information. He usually just waves it off. Even Ross's salvation, even Dr. Ross's salvation testimony seems to be very Ross-oriented. He almost gives the impression that God was hiding in the woodshed of science and that Ross with his intellect smoked him out or something. But pride is a universal sin. Every last one of us have it, including myself, and we have to remind ourselves, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble, according to 1 Peter 5. I have to take this moment to remind the viewer this is not my vicious attack against Dr. Ross. Even though I think his testimony sounds fishy, even though I think his um, approach is dubious, even though I think his ministry is deceptive, I don't necessarily doubt that he is a born-again man. I don't have any angst against this man. I really don't. I look forward to the day when we both can sing together in full rejoicing, standing before the God whose glory, whose engineering, whose art, whose sinlessness, whose attributes are so beyond what our imaginations and our observations can conjure up. However, 2 Timothy 2 says that I am to teach that which has been taught to me by godly men, and that uh, and Romans 16 says that I am to rebuke those who teach heresy. Dr. Ross is leading millions into deception. The blind leading the blind, they'll both wind up in the ditch, and I advise you, don't take everything he says carte blanche. That being said, I hope, I hope you folks have a great day in the Lord. I pray that you continue to study your Bible, and that uh, put God first in your life. You have a good day. God bless.